Hey guys, Angle3 here, and today I would like to talk about this cryptid, and I'd like to discuss, um, could it be real, or is it most likely not? Um, so here we have the Emila Natuka, I think it is, and he, as you can see from the pictures here, it is quite, you know, it's not your run-of-the-mill Bigfoot type of cryptid. It's got a very, well, as from the picture you might be seeing right now, I'm not sure what picture you're seeing, You, it looks quite a bit like a dinosaur at first sight, but, and you know, it does seem to have a lot of similarities to a dinosaur, but, you know, it also is compared to a rhinoceros and an elephant. And so I'd like to discuss, is it real? And if it is, like, what's the possibility of it being real? And if it is, what's it like? So, the first thing, maybe the most striking feature of it would have to be its horn. Um, now, the horn is a very important part of the creature. Now, there's been some discussion whether it's on, or it's on top of the snout, or if it's on the forehead. Um... I'd say most depictions uh, have it on the forehead. The horn is something that is it's very important as the classification of this creature. If the, you see, if it's bone, then that means it's a reptile. If it's ivory, that means it's not even a horn at all. If it's ivory, that means it's a tusk, like what elephants and walruses have. But if it's keratin, that makes it sort of more like a rhino. Now, if you don't know what keratin is, it's the stuff that your fingernails and your hair is made out of. And, you know, that would mean that it's very similar to a rhino, probably. And, I'm, so, I'm sorry if I say and a lot, that also means that, basically, if it's ivory or keratin, it's not a reptile. And if it's not a reptile, it's not a dinosaur. Um... And another reason I like to say it's not a reptile is because it's a very large animal relative to the size of an elephant. It's, it's around that size. And we don't really see animals, like, I mean, not animals, reptiles that big these days. You see, the closest we have was Megalania, which lived in Australia, uh, died out around the time people arrived in Australia. It was huge. Huge, long as a bus, monitor a lizard, and it died out. And that was sort of the biggest we had, and we haven't got anything bigger since. And you know, Australia, keep in mind, is a very isolated continent. The only thing it had to compete with is marsupials, and if you don't know what marsupials are, it's basically kangaroos and koalas. And if you know anything about me and koalas, I don't think koalas are much competition. Um, so then we have Africa, which is a lot less of an isolated continent and more of a... It's a large continent. It's And it's got connections to Asia and Europe. And even a little bit to Indonesia, as you saw. Not, you didn't see it, but there... But you may know that there are... Um, people from Indonesia who migrated to Madagascar. The people on Madagascar didn't come from Africa. They came from Indonesia. So, it even has connections to that. So, it's not that much of an isolated continent. So, something like a large reptile coming there is a lot less likely as it was in Australia. So, then there's another feature. It's tail. And the, and the tail is very important because there's not a lot like it in Africa. There's nothing really to confuse it with. Elephants, they have short tails. Rhinoceroses, they have short tails. Hippos, short tails. There's nothing to confuse it with. So, this, it makes it a lot le less likely for it to be a mistaken identity as what this creature is. And that's... And the tail also helps with the argument that this is not a dinosaur. 
if you look like if you saw a picture of a dinosaur it was once believed like with iguanodon and the tyrannosaurus rex that their tails dragged along the ground like what you see here with the uh the emela and tuca but we now know that that's not the case their tails were lifted off the ground and even some, it's pleased with the diplodocus that they were used sort of like iguanas in which they used it for communication which so that means if the whole dinosaur's tails lifted off the ground is true, this isn't a dinosaur because it's depicted in many pictures and everything as its tail dragging along the ground. Okay, so if it's real, how do we not how do we not know about this? It's as big as an elephant. Well, there's a lot of creatures that were at one point cryptids, especially in Africa, that we now accept as science. Uh, I have pictures of the Okapi and the mountain gorilla. Those were once um, cryptids. People thought, you know, they're a lot like Bigfoot, that they just simply didn't exist. Then we got them, we proved they exist, and now we accept them as fact. So... Does it mean that it's likely that this is out there? Well, this is sort of a different story as it's as big as an elephant. Quite big, if you don't know what an elephant, how big an elephant really is. So, it's a lot less likely, but it's still possible. So, is does it exist? That's something, well, and it's, even in Africa, you see the coelacanth, which we thought was extinct, and now we see it's still alive in remote parts of under underwater, but that's underwater. We are, we aren't aquatic. We are terrestrial creatures, so we're a lot better at traveling and discovering on land than we ever are on water. Underwater, I mean. So I keep asking, does this thing exist? Um... Possibly. Yeah, I mean... It could possibly exist. But let's... Before we even go to that, let's talk about some of its attributes. What makes this sort of interesting is it seems to be a creature that's malicious. It's angry. It wants to kill. In fact, its name is the Elephant Killer. I don't know if that's the translation of its name, but it has been called the Elephant Killer. In fact, it was even in a book called, if I can look it up here, 18 Years on Lake Bangwulu, I think it's called. It was written by J.E. Hughes, and, a, and it, it was reported in it that there's a creature that sort of fits the description of the Emila Natu Natuka. And in, and you know, Sightings of this have said that it attacks elephants and kills them. And not just elephants, it'll attack hippos. And it's going to be just for no reason. Because if what I'm reading is correct, it doesn't, it's not entirely carnivorous. And it might not even be, might just kill these things just to kill them. I mean, I bet it is carnivorous, but it, but it kills them for reasons other than survival. It seems to be a malicious creature, which is something that is a little hard to accept because creatures don't, animals just don't kill other animals for no reason. Nothing has ever displayed malice besides human beings. Something just pure evil but and that's part of its behavior um and where does it live uh it likes to it, it's a i believe it ha probably lives in it, it probably lives in plains areas 
savannah where elephants tend to live since it does kill elephants but it, but if you look it up it even lives in swamps which makes sense because it also has been known to kill hippos so and as i look as i'm looking it says it is a solitary which makes sense since it's a very malicious creature herbivorous creature it's killing these things for no reason I mean, there's probably plenty of food to go around. There's no reason to kill these things besides pure malicious behavior. Um, it's said to live in the Congo River Basin, shallow waters of swamps and lakes of the Congo River Basin. It's said to live in the Republic of Congo and possibly even Cameroon. And it's said to inhabit Lake Bangwulu in, Zam in Zambia and... I believe the title of the book was 18 years on Lake Zambu. I'm sorry if I'm butchering that name. So, such a large creature. It, it, even if it's in Africa where we know creatures that have been reported to be cryptids have been seen before, it must still have been discovered before. Well, look at it. There have been books written where it's been reported um been reported in lots of things it's been reported by the inhabitants they should be the most trusted people on the subject they lived there for longer than anyone else it's like it's like what, what christopher columbus did he came in and he said i discovered north america he didn't the native americans well, what we now know Native Americans were there for much longer. One second. So I'm back and I'd like to talk more about this subject. You know, Christopher Columbus, as I say, just came in, put the flag down, said this is North America. I discovered it when the Native Americans, which had came from Asia, had discovered it way sooner. But because this is because Christopher Columbus is more sophisticated, more humane. He he discovered it when he didn't. And so here we are when why should our proof be more important than their documentation, their witnesses, if I mean one guy even claimed he had a horn of it and that it was even recorded on a show that never aired. So, why, I mean, it, it, I'm not saying that it's real because they say it's real. I'm saying maybe we shouldn't say that their eyewitness reports aren't invalid because they're not American respected scientists. I mean, you don't have to be American to be a respected scientist. One second, I'll be right back. So now I get to the last part. Why wouldn't it be real? There's, there's no evidence of it. Besides the witnesses and this guy, he says he has a horn. Obviously, like most cryptids, we can't believe it because there's no evidence of it. But you know what? It doesn't mean that. It's not real. So, what do I think? Is it real or not? It seems to have a lot of resemblance to creatures that are already alive, which is something that you don't want to have with a cryptid because it's a lot less likely to be respected it seems to be a hodgepodge of creatures we already know exists and it's a lot easier to say it can't be real but it also has a lot of traits that are original to it and it looks like a creature that could actually exist and could survive in the ecosystem of where it's said to live so i'd have to say would I lean more to it doesn't exist 
or it does exist, I'd have to say, I'd have to lean more to it does exist. But, barely. It's not something that I'd say, most likely it exists. I'd say, it's quite possible. There's not nearly enough evidence to dissupport it. And, you know, I'd say it sort of probably does exist. I don't know how else to word it. It simply could possibly exist, but I wouldn't say, I wouldn't go out and spend years of my life trying to find this creature. Another thing I'd like to bring up is that there are, that Africa is home to a lot of cryptids that seem to have a, resembl a resemblance to dinosaurs. I mean, we have the Mkele Mbembe, which is famous. It's a world famous cryptid. It's supposedly a sauropod, which is you know, long neck dinosaur, and it, it, it too has a hatred of hippos, <laughs> which, you know, funny, um, but yeah, it's, and there's tons of others, there's, um, the, <laughs> mi, mi, belu, mi, belu, mi, belu. um, which is supposedly might be his Stegosaurus dinosaur. And all around the world, in Africa, we have, not in Africa, Australia, we have other, um, sore, not sore, pod, carnosaur type dinosaurs, which are like the T-Rex. In Canada, we have one. In Australia, ton tons of places, we have reports of dinosaurs still being alive, and it's not all that crazy. You know, because dinosaurs were at one point one of the most dominant species on the planet. Of course, they died out now, and it's, it's sort of out there to assume that they all just died out at once. And I know I said earlier that it's most likely not a dinosaur, but, you know, it's quite possible that maybe there's some other explanation for these dinosaur-like creatures, that they're not dinosaurs. But even throughout history, you see creatures evolve that had similar traces stuff that went extinct a while ago. Like, um, <laughs> uh, what are they? trilobites and crabs, very similar, you know, shell-like design. They're very similar, right? That's, I'm not going to go into detail. But, yeah, there's a lot to it that, you know, maybe there's a lot more to it. That's what I'm trying to say. And, you know, final point, final Final thing I'd like to say is my original whole point of this video. Is it real? What are the chances? I'd say I'd give it 6 out of 10. 6 out of 10 likelihood that this is a real living organism that is still alive today. And that's it. This is Angle 3, signing out. Bye.